what is happening youtube family it is your boy b new coming at you this morning uh just want to hit on a few topics in the nba as usual uh you know had a couple of games few games last night on the nba slate but want to uh talk about the kyrie Irving situation uh the brooklyn nets the los angeles lakers and a little bit more but first and foremost as i always do around this time just want to touch on the game last night between the lakers and houston which wasn't much of a game as all at all because I think we all knew that this was going to be the case. They had just played a few nights ago. Uh, like I said, they've been doing that throughout the year, uh, early this season, having a lot of uh, one-on-ones with teams. I think just because of COVID and it's just easy for the schedule, I don't know if that's something that they're going to look into doing more so in the future uh, if this COVID thing ever goes away. But at the end of the day, uh, pretty much the Lakers had their way with the Houston Rockets early on uh, the first quarter. I don't know if that was a record for Houston for the lowest points in the quarter, uh, first quarter or not, but at the end of the first quarter, it was like 39 to 15. I mean, it was terrible. The onslaught just came in full effect. And now I'm hoping that everybody is fully capable of seeing what the Lakers are capable of doing. I'm just hoping everybody can see that for themselves right now, because the only team that's gonna beat the Lakers is the Lakers. Uh, no other team is really going to beat them. They're only going to beat themselves because they're just too deep all the way around. And although you do give up rim protectors and athleticism at the center position by giving up JaVale McGee and Dwight Howard, uh, Marcus Gasol is finally starting to come into his own, and he drops dimes, and he's capable of spreading the floor. And I think we could see that last night by him going out to the three-point line that spread the floor for LeBron just to be able to get into the paint and pretty much have his way. And I mean, LeBron James, and I know I don't know if a lot of people saw the game, but it was one point during the game when LeBron was over in the corner and they came off of him, then he was about to shoot the three and he shot the three and he turned his back before the ball even went in and turned his back because he knew the ball was going in. Then the bench went crazy. So of course, you know, a lot of people on Twitter, a lot of people across the internet start giving LeBron James hell like they always do. Oh, he's such a showboater, but it's fine when Steph Curry does it. You know, it's fine when Steph Curry does it, but it's LeBron James. You know, we cannot let him showboat or anything like that. But after the game, if you listen to it, LeBron, they asked him, what, why did he do that? And he said, Dennis Schroeder, Dennis was uh, over there in the corner. You know, he was at the corner by the bench, you know, shooting a three. And they was like, I bet you miss it. I bet you're not going to make it. So LeBron heard Dennis say, I bet you're not going to make it and took it as a challenge and went ahead and shot the ball and turned his back like, How's that? So that, that drove the bench crazy. They was like, ooh. So, you know, they was pretty hype off that. And, you know, that was just fun. But LeBron James didn't hang around. As soon as he turned his back and they got hype, he ran back down the court to get back on defense, which I don't know if a lot of people notice him. But LeBron's defense is excellent this year. Uh, you might have not noticed that in his 18th year that he's still playing pretty good defense for all of those people to say he's not playing defense. And I don't mean just chase down blocks. I mean, his average defensive PER is pretty good for anybody who's taking 100 shots uh, in this league. For anybody who's defended somebody who's shot at least, that's defended at least 100 shots, LeBron James is in the top five as far as uh, opponent's field goal percentage of people that he's guarding. So, he can still take on the challenge of being a good defender. So, as I was saying, the Lakers came out and took care of business. Anthony Davis looked superb. Uh, KCP back from injury looking real good. I mean, Caruso. I mean, just the Lakers are too deep. Then you got the no trez pass zone. I like saying that the no trez pass zone because Montrez Harrell would not allow you to come through there without having a contested shot uh, block. He's not going to give you an easy layup or a dunk. You're going to really have to earn it in the paint. And he's giving you so much offensively uh, as far as coming off the bench and just getting you a double-double every game and just attacking the boards. I mean, his offensive rebounds are ridiculous. So just from top to bottom, I mean, the Lakers are such a deep team. And don't get me wrong, Brooklyn is a deep team too even though the loss of Dinwiddie really hurts them for the year. But uh, speaking of the Brooklyn Nets, I don't know if a lot of people know this, but people think LeBron James and, and Kevin uh, aren't friends. But a lot of people in, in, in the association of friends and worked out together and stuff like that. I won't say they're the best of friends, but I don't know if a lot of you know this, but early in his career, Kevin, Kevin used to come out uh, to Cleveland uh, and a lot of different places and meet LeBron in the summer and that they would, they would sit up there and challenge each other in one-on-ones and play against each other all summer. 
You think that didn't help KD become a better player? Do you think that LeBron was just sitting up here saying, "Oh, uh, well, I'm such a hater. I'm not gonna help. I'm not gonna help him get better." You know, because LeBron knew that helped him get better too, because he's going against one of the very best. So that's what you call true sportsmanship. So they developed a, a sense of chemistry, you know, but of course it kind of maybe broke away a little bit over the years because of Kevin Durant's jealousy. And I can make a whole nother video about that to prove my point. And nobody knows what's in another man's heart, but Kevin Durant is taking some slight little shots at LeBron James over the uh, over the past couple of years because he just felt that everything is always about LeBron. He felt like I beat LeBron in two finals, but it's kind of like I don't know if any of y'all ever saw Rocky, uh, the Rock, the last Rocky before they remade it, the last Rocky when he was going against Tommy Machine Gun Morrison, and and you know Rocky had retired and Tommy Gun had knocked out the the champ. And everybody was calling him a paper champ because that champ didn't defeat Rocky Balboa to get the belt. So Tommy Gunn had only beat the paper champ. And everybody's like, man, you can't beat Rocky Balboa. You can't beat Rocky Balboa. You'll always be living in the shadow. You'll always be living in the shadow. Well, that's probably how Kevin Durant feel because even though he beat LeBron James, it's not an individual contest. He had a way better team. So all of you people who think that Kevin Durant beat LeBron James in the finals, by himself single-handedly. Please, let me ask you this question. If you take LeBron James and you put him on that same Golden State team with Clay, with Steph, and with Draymond, and then you swap it out and you put Kevin Durant, especially on that second team where Kyrie was gone, and you put Kevin Durant on that team with just Kevin Love and the others, do you even think Kevin Durant was going to even make it to the finals? He might would have. He's that good. He might could have could have beat Boston. I'm not sure if he could have because LeBron James had a hell of a series that, that year to beat Indianapolis, Boston, and the number one seed Toronto swept them. But regardless, my main point is I'm pretty sure that LeBron James was texting Kevin Durant and saying, your problem now, bro. Your problem now, Kevin Durant. Like, oh, man. So that's more about the Kyrie situation. So before I get into that, uh, the Kyrie situation, I more so wanted to talk about uh, the game last night, uh, the Denver Nuggets against uh, New Jersey. I don't know why I keep calling them New Jersey. The Brooklyn, uh, the Denver Nuggets against the Brooklyn Nets last night, which I really thought the Nets was going to pull away with it. It was a good game throughout. Kevin Durant did his thing. I want to say he had like 34 and 11 and 8. I almost had the triple dub, but he was getting everybody involved. Uh, and you know what? I said I was going to keep calling him Kevin. He back to KD now because he's proven himself. He's back from injury, and I will say he's the second best player in the league easily. Uh, and he's right there neck and neck with LeBron because I'm not a hater. I know he's right there with LeBron because of the cap capabilities he has of scoring, even though I don't feel like he has the leadership of a LeBron James because I don't think if Kyrie was pulling all this stuff with LeBron, I don't think LeBron would be silenced in the media saying, well, you got to talk to him and, well, we support him. I think LeBron James would be holding Kyrie accountable. And that's what leaders do. They hold other players on their team accountable. Uh, and we have to do that throughout our job sometimes. You know, whatever field you may be in, you might have to look at a teammate and say, look, man, you got to step it up. We can't be pulling all your weight. We got to hold each other accountable. And I'm not just talking about from a supervisory position. I'm just saying as a teammate. But anyway, uh, Kevin Durant was looking real good. But I'm going to go ahead and pull a Skip Bayless. I'm not a hater. I'm going to go ahead and pull a Skip Bayless on this. Because when Kevin Durant, when the game was tied, 113 to 113, and I thought Jokic was going to take over, and he came down and hit the shot, and they took the lead, I thought he was going to take over. Uh, then I want to say uh, Levert came down and hit a shot and tied it up. Now, at that point, Kevin Durant did make a clutch shot and make the little short shot, uh, the little pull-up, to put them up by two. And then, of course, Denver went back down and missed the shot. And then Kevin Durant, when he came back down, okay, you up by two. So this is why I'm pulling the Skip Bayless. Because Skip Bayless always says, well, they were up by two. That's not clutch. They were up by two. So I want to see if he end up saying that today or tomorrow whenever I get a chance to go watch it. He always say, well, that's not clutch if you're already winning. Well, it was still clutch. I'm not going to take anything away from KD. It was clutch because, you know, I still feel like it was an easier shot to make. So I kind of do see what Skip is saying because you're up by two and then you make it. But it's still clutch to me because it's a closely contested ball game and then he put it out of reach. So shout outs to Kevin Durant for being able to do that last night because even though the Brooklyn Nets don't have a good record right now, uh, I knew they would probably stumble out the gate not knowing that Kyrie was not going to be there. I still thought they would stumble out the gate a little bit the same way Miami did 
uh, when LeBron joined D-Wade down in Miami and they formed a team. I want to say they were 10 and 10 through the first 20 games because you got to build a cohesiveness with one another. But let's get more back into the Kyrie Irving situation. So with Kyrie, you know, missing missing the games, that there's been reports saying that the Brooklyn front office is getting tired and weary of Kyrie is saying that he's protesting about everything that happened at the Capitol. And don't get me wrong, I can understand being upset uh, about everything that happened at the Capitol, but I need to make a whole nother channel just to tell you my thoughts and views about that. Uh, you know, I try not to get into too many political uh, matters on the sports channel uh, for various reasons. There's a lot of different reasons. Uh, you can risk being shut down. Uh, even with your main job, you can only say so many things because you got to be held accountable in the places in which you work. And of course, YouTube is not my main job yet. <laughs> Unless y'all help me out with some more subscribers and some views, then maybe it can be and I can give you my full gist. But I'm not afraid to bite my tongue. What I will say is I'm with Kyrie Irving as far as how he feels that people, other people would have been treated a whole lot differently uh, had they uh, came and stormed Capitol Hill the way that they did. It would have been a lot more people dead than just one person, and I'll be willing to put a lot of money on that. So I can understand Kyrie being upset, uh, you know, with with the other verdict with Brianna, and also, you know, with the events that transpired on Capitol Hill. But at the same time, when you do a protest, you know, I know Kaepernick did a protest single-handedly, but you are part of a team. So you have to inform, first of all, you fell off the radar by not informing your uh, coaches and your staff, the coaching staff, uh, where you were and what you were doing, but you text your teammates. You have to text everybody. You have to call everybody and let them hear it out of your mouth. And I'm pretty sure some of your teammates are all upset too. But see, there's a method to the madness of being able to protest and protesting things because people might say, well, what is Kaepernick doing? Well, he draw, he drew a lot of attention to what was going on already that people didn't, that, that people weren't really paying attention to. So shouts out to Kaepernick for that because it drew a whole lot of attention on that. But there's already attention on Capitol Hill. There's already millions of people talking about the, the atrocities and things that's going on uh, within our political system and the things right here within the United States of America. And the thing is, what are you really doing? How is you not, how is not playing games helping the situation as far as the protest is concerned, Kyrie? Like, I don't understand how that's, that's bringing light to the subject, first of all, because if that's what you were truly doing, then you have a media platform to where you can get up and say, this is the reason why. But we're having to find out through other sources and all kind of other people why you haven't been making yourself available to play and becoming a detriment to your team. You know, when Kaepernick was doing this, he was more so of a backup, so he wasn't even a detriment to his team because he wasn't even playing. But you're a starter in the NBA, so people depend on you to come out and start. It's not just you. You let down, you let down your fans, you let down the Brooklyn Nets organization, and you let down your teammates. And the fact of the matter is, if you truly wanted to protest, then how about you can still protest during the game or after the game, and then every game you have a platform to where you talk to the media. So how about after each game, you can go out here and say how you feel about what happened in the Capitol, and then you put a voice behind your protest, but you really not, like you not showing up for games, is really not doing the job. And not only that, uh, not only that, you got to think about this. You are missing so many games that you're becoming a detriment to your team. And then who knows how's it going to affect your relationship with Kevin Durant, you know, because this could end up being a lot of problems and then they might not want to uh, play you anymore. But there are sources that's coming out that say Kyrie is willing to give it all up uh, for his protest which, hey, you know what, if he's willing to do that, who am I to knock this man for his beliefs? You know, at the end of the day, I'm pretty sure a lot of us are upset about some of the things that happened, but we still went to work the next day because there's a way to bring about change. And protest is a good way to bring about change, but you have to pick the right time and place. And who am I to say uh, when and not to, but at the end of the day, what is his protest really doing to bring about any sort of change, or bring about any attention to the matter? Uh, you know, so I don't really understand that uh, from Kyrie. You know, I do think Kyrie is very intelligent. A lot of people think that he isn't because of the way he, what he thinks about the flat earth. But, you know, I have my own thoughts and views about that as well. Uh, 
I just encourage everybody to not always accept everything that you've been taught uh, just to go out and research some things for yourself and you'll be surprised some of the things that you may find out and that's all I'm gonna say I'm gonna leave that at that leave that at that uh, once again this is your boy B new I am saying right on to the real and much love to the haters I'm out